You're a thief and a liar. I only lied about being a thief. I don't do that anymore. Steal. Lie. George Clooney's acting chops were on full display in the movie Ocean's Eleven. This morning, he's in conversation about his latest film with Tracy Smith. Come in, Ether. This is Barbo Observatory. Are you receiving this? Yep. That's him. Is anyone out there? In our galaxy alone, there are billions of stars. At least one of them has the potential to support life. In the futuristic thriller, The Midnight Sky, George Clooney is a lone scientist trying to warn astronauts away from an Earth that is no longer habitable, and all while he's caring for a young child. I understand. For the movie, Clooney grew a beard, dropped some weight, and put on his director's hat. Take a deep breath. You haven't been taking on a lot of acting roles. No. What was it about this project that was so compelling that you decided to direct and act in it? I saw the part and I thought, well, this is a really great part. And then I had an idea of how to tell the story, and so I called up Netflix and said, you know, I think I, I, think I have a take on it. As we see Earth, in case what we want to do is, with our graphic, is have it just get enveloped. It's going from blue to brown. So you're going to watch it go from blue to brown. Okay. So let's try it that way. The film, in theaters and on Netflix December 23rd, is both powerful and poignant. And don't even ask about the ending. Clooney shot it all last year, just before the real world shut down. Are you enjoying being home all the time mm -hmm. now? Well, look, no. <laughs> of course not. We met George at his home in L.A., where he spent the past few months with his wife, human rights lawyer Amal Clooney, their two kids, and a whole lot of time on his hands. It's been a while since I did, you know, 15 loads of laundry in a day and mop floors and, you know, all these doors over here I stained. Um, and it was, you know, I always say I felt like my mother in 1964 because <laughs> she had two kids and no help, and I don't know how she did it now. I have more sympathy for her now than ever. And have you been cutting your own hair? Mm -hmm. I've been cutting my own hair for... 25 years. So it has nothing to do with quarantine. No. Nah. Look, I have my hair's like really like straw, you know, and so it's easy to cut. You can't really make too many mistakes. So years ago, uh, I bought a, a thing called a Floby, which when we you were did kid, not. when I was a kid, yeah. The infomercial, the yeah, Floby. This ingenious device lets you give yourself and family perfect haircuts every time. Yes. It comes with a vacuum cleaner yes. and the clippers. Yeah, I still have it. Stop it. You I, don't use it. My haircuts take literally two minutes. I go, is, is, th th is this Floby? Yeah, it's Floby. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah, listen, man, it works. <laughs> now, you know, I wouldn't do it to my wife. You been using my hair treatment? Your hair treatment? Excuse me. In case you're keeping track, Clooney and his Flobied hair have made more than four dozen films and picked up two Oscars along the way. Sometimes it's impossible to save a kid's life, and the only thing we can do has saved them from suffering. He first came to fame as a doctor in the NBC series ER, but he was hardly an overnight success. He'd struggled in Hollywood for years after moving out from his Kentucky home with little more than the shirt on his back. It was 1982 when I wanted to move out to uh, L.A., and I had a beat-up 76 Monte Carlo, rust all over it. I would fill it with oil and check the gas. And I drove it out here in three days. I didn't turn it off. <laughs> because? I was afraid I couldn't turn it back on. And uh, I got here, broke down, and I got a bicycle, and I rode to auditions all around town for uh, a year and a half. On a bike? Yeah. Now 59 and a millionaire many times over, he keeps busy with the Clooney Foundation for Justice that grew out of his work in places like South Sudan. All of you should know that um, what you said here today will be heard and listened to around the world. But the midnight sky was one of his most demanding jobs to date. This scene, where he's separated from the little girl, was shot in a real Arctic snowstorm. I see you! How tough was it to shoot that? That was the very first week of shooting. We were in Iceland. So we went out, it's 40 degrees below zero, and it's 70 mile an hour wind gusts. And I was doing stuff without 
goggles so my eyelids would freeze shut after about a little over a minute. And so we, I could only do a take for that long and then I'd have to go in and they'd take a blow dryer and get my eyelashes And open blow dry your eyelashes. So I could go back out. It seems like an action film. But Clooney says it's really about human beings' need to connect across the universe or just across a room. I would say one of the themes of the film is that idea of having someone to care for mm -hmm. can keep you going. In your own life, does having someone to care for change things? Yes. There is no question that having a, a mall in my life changed everything for me. No question about that. Um, it was the first time that everything that she did and everything about her was infinitely more important than anything about me. And then we had these, these two knuckleheads and it is very fulfilling and something I wasn't at all, didn't see coming. So, you know, when we, we never talked about marriage when we were dating and I asked her out of the blue, took her a long time to say, uh, I was on my knee for like 20 minutes. <laughs> I finally said, look, I'm gonna throw my hip out. <laughs> we told that story to her parents and they're like, there's something wrong with his hip. <laughs> and, then, and we never talked about having kids. And then one day we just said, what do you think? And, you know, and then we go to the doctor and, you know, you do the ultrasound and they're like, yeah, hey, you got a baby boy. I was like, baby boy, fantastic. And they go, and you got another one there. And I was like, I was up for one. <laughs> Cause yeah, again, I'm like, I'm old. And all of a sudden it's like two and I literally, you know, it's hard to get me to not talk. And I just stood there for like 10 minutes just staring at this piece of paper going, too. Silently. But now it's silent. <laughs> but I'm so glad they have each other, you know. So it is a wonderful thing, right? It's unbelievable. All right, guys, that's it. Congratulations. We got this one done. Thank you. When he's not making movies, Clooney says he spends a third of his time with his foundation, but quietly. For a guy who's now made a few space movies, George Clooney is, forgive me for this, remarkably down to earth. So do you, I'm curious, mm. just watching you, you're very self-deprecating, and I'm mm. wondering, is, is that something that is in your nature, or do you work on that? I think it's in my nature. I think, you know, a lot of times the, the secret is you take the gun out of their hands before they can shoot you, you know? I, I just, I think that that's a, it's a healthy way of looking at the world. There's a line in, I think it was a movie called Out of the Past. Uh, Robert Mitchum says, I never learned anything from hearing myself talk. It's kind of a good, it's a good measure to go by.